So here we are sitting. The reactor relief valve is open. The holding tank is filling up. There is, of course, some monitor that tells you the level of water in the holding tank. And if the reactor operators had looked at that particular dial, they would have said, hey, wait a minute, everything isn't right. The holding tank keeps getting more full and full and fuller. Must have some other problem here. They thought everything was under control. But you can't fault them tremendously because the control room was not designed well. Holding tank level, who's ever going to need to look at that right away? That monitor was on the other side of some bank of instruments. So they didn't know. They found out because at one hour and 40 minutes later, the holding tank fills up and, of course, overflows. And now we have slightly radioactive water going into the sump under the reactor inside the containment building. There are some alarms that go off, trying to really scratch their heads now. How can we have any radioactive water outside here? And since the holding tank's designed to pretty much hold the amount of water that's needed in the reactor, at an hour and 55 minutes, the core is uncovered. And that isn't good because now the fuel is starting to heat up and you're starting to make hydrogen production. This combination of the hot fuel of water breaking into hydrogen and oxygen is a potential really bad problem. Still though, if you could gently cool this core back down, Again, Three Mile Island would be a mere footnote in history. So, at this point, we've got people that finally figure out that the relief valve is stuck open. And they shut it manually. And that's great. I still sense that there's probably some core uncovered. And here is where they make a critical mistake. At two hours and 24 minutes into the accident, they turn the ECCS back on. And this might make logical sense. After all, we didn't know all that water was coming out. We had turned it off long ago. Let's turn it back on and let's add water back in. Mm, but have you ever been camping? You know that if you have a campfire and you've got rocks in your campfire, those rocks get really, really hot, just like the core and the fuel rods, you don't pour cold water on hot rocks. Because, as this demo shows, cold water on hot rocks means the rocks, the fuel rods, crack. And maybe, when they're now in smaller pieces and not being cooled, maybe even melt. And those fission products, the highly radioactive waste, the things that were the uranium that it split into, are now released into the rest of the reactor core. This spilling of the contents of the fuel rods is, of course, now a major disaster because once the rods crack and the structures fall apart, you have an unrecoverable mess. And you've now evolved some of the radioactive gases that were trapped in there get out into the vessel and into the containment building. So the rods crack and the gases are released. We have one more safety feature, right? We have a containment building. And these containment buildings are extremely impressive. Here's a picture. These right here are the containment buildings. So the radioactive gases that come out because the rods crack, they are now contained. And that safety system certainly absolutely worked. This gas was not released out. The radioactive material that was in the fuel rods is now, some of it, 
the, at least the gaseous parts, in the entire containment building. Nine and a half hours later, there's a hydrogen explosion. <laughs> the hydrogen explosion has now ripped up even more of the core, certainly not going to be a recoverable power plant. Well under the pressure limits for the containment building, so there's no breach. But it means that our um, beautiful, almost new power plant has now, at least this reactor at it, will never work again. Later, after they're able to go in and examine what happened in the reactor core, here's a diagram of approximately what it looked like. You can see there's a missing void area, that lots of things are cracked, and some of the stuff and the material in there actually melted and pooled up at the bottom. The vessel's intact, containment building's intact, but inside here is a mess. What about those radioactive gases? They're trapped inside the containment building. And before you can go in to find out what's happened in the core, before you can start cleaning this up, you've got to get rid of those gases. So, after lots of consultation and thinking, they put radiation monitors around the entire site. They do a calculation and realize that if we just release this gas into the air slowly over a couple weeks, the dilution factor will be so huge that we'll have really no radiological risk. That's what they did. Over the next two weeks, they released the radioactive gases so that workers could go into the plant, into the containment vessel, and work on what was now a major cleanup. The maximum dose that you could get if you were always downwind on the border of that island was around 80 millirem, which is still a trivial level of dose. The average person that wasn't downwind but was in some nearby city maybe one and a half millirem, a couple dental x-rays, was all of the radiation exposure from Three Mile Island. 